Now to our special report tonight in accounting of the most influential deputy attorney general in recent history, to be sure, if not of all time, Rod Rosenstein. And we couldn't do this full report until this week because this is Rosenstein's last week on the job. An earlier accounting could have easily been quite incomplete considering that Rosenstein has zigged and zagged in his role overseeing what is supposed to be a very special independent probe, special counsel Mueller's probe, because he ultimately helped Bill Barr land the plane, as they both use that phrase, and the two were all smiles at something I'm going to show you right now, this cozy Washington event that just occurred this week that marked Rosenstein's last formal day at DOJ headquarters, and because of Trump's attacks on the Mueller probe, tested virtually every major official in law enforcement, this gathering looks like a hoo-hoo, a who's who, I should say, of the Russia's investigation. From FBI Director Chris Wray, who Trump tapped after firing James Comey, to Jeff Sessions, the AG whose campaign ties led DOJ's ethics office to recommend he recuse from the whole probe, which put Rosenstein in charge, to Bill Barr, a former attorney general who took the job back after Trump ousted Sessions. And Barr gave quite the tribute to Rosenstein, a very public indication that no matter how Rosenstein began this process, he ended on Team Trump. Keep in mind, this whole scene is unfolding against quite the backdrop, the public facts that Barr misrepresented key parts of the Mueller report before ever releasing it, Congress moving forward on holding Barr in contempt. While Congress hasn't formalized its final reaction to Mueller's report, it's still seeking testimony from, yep, some of the people in the room you're looking at, including former White House counsel Don McGahn. So with all that going on, those law enforcement leaders you just saw, they didn't just joke around at this thing, which could be understandable at a, a send-off, a retirement party. Watch as they make these serious and unresolved matters of the Russia probe a joke itself, Barr minimizing his own contempt vote as others treated this whole probe as a, a punchline. When we came in, I had no doubt, Richard, there would be a lot of controversies uh, and during my tenure. But in truth, I have to say, our run exceeded my expectation. I gotta say. <laughs> Considerably. There's been a debate raging for the last few months, and, and uh, I think we have to get it resolved and decided tonight. And that is, which one of us is capable of the most deadpan expression? <laughs> ha, 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 ha. But is that funny? It is literally a reference to Rosenstein's now famous expression, during Mr. Barr's presser, which was proven to be misleading at best. That attention was not superficial. It was not about Rosenstein's style or mood. What you're looking at on your screen was the very real question about whether that person there, who once proclaimed the core import of an independent probe, was really fine with what Barr was doing in front of the country. People searching his face for, are you okay with this? Now. Rosenstein has had a long career at DOJ. We should note he worked in the department since 1990, a 12-year stint under two presidents as a U.S. attorney, and he has handled many important cases ably, according to his colleagues. But right now, he is best known for his most senior position overseeing this probe, and it started remarkably. Rod Rosenstein helped execute Trump's firing of FBI Director Comey, and then Rod Rosenstein ordered an independent probe into that firing. And until recently, Rosenstein's defenders argued, well, that sounds weird, but it was because Trump used Rosenstein. He was a victim in the unusual firing. And now we have the Mueller report. And that shows that defense doesn't hold water. It shows that Rosenstein knowingly helped Trump pull off the misleading firing, writing a memo that didn't tell the whole truth about it, and that Rosenstein was on notice in advance. We know that Rosenstein allowed himself to be manipulated by Trump because the report proves Rosenstein knew from the start Trump wanted to fire Comey because of Russia, as Ben Wittes explains in a new piece about the Mueller evidence. And it shows Trump asked him explicitly to include the Russia stuff in his memo about Comey, and Rosenstein pushed back, and Trump said, okay, but I'd really appreciate it if you put it in the letter anyway, which means Rosenstein knew Comey would be terminated when he wrote his letter. He even told colleagues his own reasons to critique James Comey were, quote, not the president's reasons. That 
was the reality behind the scenes as White House officials went out publicly to lie about this suddenly controversial firing, tried to pin it on Rosenstein, and they knew, some of them, that it was Trump who was asking Rosenstein for the whole cover story. He took the recommendation of Rod Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General. Rod Rosenstein was confirmed just 14 days ago by a vote of 94 to 6 by our United States Senators. No one can uh, question uh, Rod Rosenstein's credentials. Rod Rosenstein, who everybody across the board has unequivocally said this guy is a man of upstanding character and essentially the gold standard at the Department of Justice. Gold standard. Consider this, because it's weird how these things happen. All of that might have stopped right there. Another White House lie that they sort of get away of. But Rosenstein was livid watching those folks shred his credibility, blaming him for something that he knew Trump requested. Mueller report noting that Trump even pressed Rosenstein to then hold a press conference to back up the clips you just saw, to back up the lie. And Rosenstein responded, that was not a good idea, because if the press asked him, he would tell the truth that Comey's firing was not his idea. So Rosenstein was fine with Trump firing Comey because of the Russia investigation. He at least knew that was the plan from the start. He went along with it. What he didn't like, and this is so important as everyone talks about his tenure, he didn't like getting blamed for it. So it was just eight days later, a little over a week, that Rosenstein appointed Mueller to try to clean this all up. And Mueller, in the report, shows how it happened. Jeff Sessions, sitting with Trump, literally trying to interview for a new FBI director in that tense time, and Rosenstein calls. So Sessions steps out of the Oval to take this call from his deputy, who is, of course, in charge of the Russia probe, and tells him about the special counsel appointment. Now, as you know, you don't just interrupt a meeting with the president unless you have huge news. Rosenstein called Sessions because he knew he had to tell him immediately, even if he was with the president, and he knew he was dropping a bomb. And now we all know how the president reacted when he got Rosenstein's news delivered via Jeff Sessions. Oh, my God, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. I'm fill in the blank. His response was, this is, quote, the end of my presidency. I'm effed. He said, I'm f and, and while we obviously don't know whether Trump will face any repercussions from this report, I'd like to just live for a little longer in the moment of him saying, this is the end of my presidency, I'm That got everyone's attention, and it was in the report. But what was Trump so concerned about, among other things? You know, we don't show a lot of Trump tweets on this show, but he did explain his thinking succinctly in a tweet a month into the probe. Quote, I'm being investigated for firing the FBI director by the man who told me to fire the FBI director. And he was onto something there because he was being investigated over the Comey firing. And while Rosenstein may not have had the whole idea, he was in on the initial cover story for it. And that strange dynamic would continue because on the one hand, you have Rosenstein doing what Trump asked. And on the other, you have him overseeing and initially saying he was going to protect the independence of the probe Trump hated. Have there been people who have been uh uh, making threats privately and publicly uh, against me uh, for quite some time. And I think they should understand by now the Department of Justice is not going to be extorted. Any kind of threats that anybody makes uh, are not going to affect the way we do our job. Not going to affect the job. But Comey had his own observation about Rosenstein telling a friend, quote, Rod is a survivor, so I have concerns. In recent months, these concerns have shown exactly what Rosenstein is made of, because right in the middle of the probe, with months before it was over, credible reporting suggests from multiple sources that Rosenstein did something that is not okay, telling Trump that he was on his team and promising the subject of this open investigation that he'd be treated fairly in this private huddle, and that he was making those promises while fighting for his own job and then assuring Donald Trump, I'm the one, I can land the plane. When it was all over and Mueller found at least five instances of, quote, substantial evidence that Donald Trump had the intent to commit crimes. Rosenstein basically didn't deal with it in any serious way and then went along with Barr in his statement to the public saying there wasn't evidence to establish the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. Rosenstein then, of course, standing by Barr, not a punchline, and watched Mr. Barr further mischaracterize what Mueller found and then said it was bizarre Anyone would say Barr was misleading. 
Rosenstein handed in his notice, and then he went out of his way to praise Trump, saying not only was he grateful for the opportunity to serve, but for the courtesy and humor Trump displayed in their, yes, personal conversations, and then saying, and this is really more political than DOJ language, quote, America first. One of the strangest things about all that praise is another episode in this Rosenstein tenure, because he had to land the plane conversation with Trump after the New York Times reported Rosenstein was considering wearing a wire to tap the president. Now, some said it was maybe sarcastic. There was that defense. We weren't in the room. Rosenstein did call the story accurate, but didn't really fully ever reject the idea that he would discuss taping the president. Rosenstein, who was a prosecutor for decades, is at least on record as a basically thinking that he needed to treat the president like a criminal suspect at that time. So whatever you think of Trump, there's something there that Rosenstein saw that justified those tactics. And yet, Rosenstein was later so concerned about Trump's conduct that how do you go from that to telling Donald Trump you're going to land the plane? Is that appropriate? It's, of course, human nature to care about how everything looks. And you expect that from all sorts of people to want to protect their legacy in real time. But that's not what you de generally want from a prosecutor. And Rosenstein, he wanted to look tough in public. He appointed the special counsel when he was under fire. Then he publicly said he wasn't going to be extorted. But the problem as we take it all together tonight is that in private, when the stakes were the highest, it appears that he bowed under pressure. And the question becomes, on Rosenstein's last day here at the Justice Department, does Rod Rosenstein even pass? the publicly stated Rod Rosenstein test. And I think they should understand by now the Department of Justice is not going to be extorted. Quote, I give the investigation credibility, Rosenstein said. I can land the plane. Any kind of threats that anybody makes uh, are not going to affect the way we do our job. Rosenstein's resignation letter today went out of its way to compliment and thank President Trump for the president's demeanor and attitude and courtesy toward Rosenstein during their, quote, personal conversations. It was the conclusion of a number of people, including me, and it was also the conclusion of the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. The key to living a life of integrity is to take ownership of the consequential decisions. Rod Rosenstein served for 29 years at DOJ and worked on many important cases, as mentioned. But apply that standard there. Did he own his most consequential decisions at the time when he finally had managerial authority? No. He buckled to Trump in the initial Comey firing. He tried to fix it with an appointment that, while vital, increasingly looks more like something he made partly out of personal calculus at the time. If Mr. Rosenstein has better explanations for any of this, he will have to go beyond the limited interview he did with his own subordinate, Bob Mueller, for the report. He'll have to address the public either before the Congress, which could happen, or in some sort of public substantive interview. Because right now, the answers don't look very good. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.